Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love Online every Saturday, and we are reading from Matthew chapter 5. And the one thing I want to I want to say is we don't always know exactly what God requires from us in our character. We don't always know how well we're towing that line. But one thing that was very sad, and I asked the Lord, I said, if I were to ask you like a, per, a percentage of the whole body of Christ all over the world, what percentage would you say if you came in the rapture, what percentage would make it out with you? And the number 15 came to my mind and such a sadness came over my heart. Only 15% of the whole body of Christ would be ready to meet him in the air. Boy, we better watch and pray, y'all. We better ask God on, I mean, every minute of every hour, Lord, am I lining up with you? Show me where I'm falling short. Don't let me derail myself, please. Wow. So anyway, let's read uh, Matthew chapter 5. And I'm going to read through because a lot of it is rich. Verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which no law, excuse me, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when ye shall when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which are before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law, or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the Lord, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Mm. Now I'm going to stop right there. Because a lot of us don't realize how our feelings towards each other, our reactions towards each other, they count to God. 
Sometimes when, when I find myself getting irritated by somebody else's shortcomings, I immediately, when I feel that feeling, I, I, I mean it. There's no need in lying about it, but I have to say, Lord, would you please forgive me? I don't want to be impatient. I don't want to be intolerant and I don't want to be judgmental. And I also don't want to be prideful thinking more of myself than I ought. And sometimes we don't realize that our impatience with other people's shortcomings is because we're comparing them to ourselves, which means we're kind of thinking that we are a whole mile ahead of them, but that may be in one area and they may be 10 miles ahead of us in another area. So we have to be careful not to be so quickly angered, not to be so short fused, not to be so short tempered with other people. Because what ends up happening, they see it on your face, even if you don't say it. They hear it in the tone of your voice. And guess what? It affects the whole atmosphere. It really does. You can tell when a person really, really, really loves teaching. And they love teaching people. They love explaining stuff and making sure they get it. Why? Because when they run into a difficult student that has a hard time grasping what they're saying. You don't hear that impatient tone in their voice. You hear them fired up because now they get to break it down and dissect that bad boy. And they're going to bring that thing right where that person lives and talk in the language where that person can understand what they're trying to I explain. And it's a good feeling to be taught by someone who loves teaching because then they don't make you feel stupid for not getting it. Do you see what I'm saying? I know I'm using a basic example, but one of the things that the Lord showed me is that a lot of times, you know, there's a scripture in the book of, uh, of Psalms, uh, Psalms 37. There's one verse in there that says, forsake wrath. And we don't realize that even those feelings of, of temperament, those, those feelings of disgust, those feelings of what's wrong with you, we have to really be careful about that. And we all have them. I mean, we'd be lying if we, if we all said we never had that feeling. That would be a lie. But as soon as we feel that feeling rise up in our hearts, we have to ask God to get it out because it's not something you want in you. <clears throat> One minute you might feel it. The next minute you might think it. And if you're not careful, one day you're going to say it. And that's when you crush someone else's spirit. Because nine times out of ten, it's not going to be said in a sweet manner. So everything we do has to be based in love, preferring others over ourselves. And we have to be careful to edify, not to demean anybody, not to put them down, not to make them feel like they're less than everybody else. We have to be careful how we do that. Because God is taking notes. So we have to be very careful. And whatever we do, the motive has to be love. Even, look, even if we have to fire somebody. Let me share this with you. I had a lady on my, uh, in my salon years ago. She was a pleasant personality. She really was. Had a pleasant personality. And you could tell she knew what she was doing you know, in her styling chair, but, 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 but she was dead set on breaking every, every cosmetology rule and Lord, it was, <laughs> I was amazed at the rules and the laws that she would be willing to break. And I remember one time I came in the shop 
She was standing there barefooted doing hair. So I had to pull her over in the back room. I said, oh, can I holler at you for a minute? I was keeping my tone right. I said, uh, I said, girl, you know we're not supposed to be barefooted. What if state board walks in? And she, she was like, I know. I said, girl, you got to put your shoes on. <laughs> so she went on and put her shoes on. And then another day I came to the shop and her teenage daughter <laughs> was applying color to her customer's hair. I said, oh, my God. I said, girl, no, 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 no. I had to pull her aside for that. So I said, I understand if you're running behind. I'll put the color on. You can call me. I'll come in if you need help. But not your daughter. She's not licensed. <laughs> so anyway, so there were a number of things that she did that, I mean, they were really, really, really serious rules that she was breaking, even rules of safety. And finally, I, I was praying about it the whole time because I said, Lord, I know we're all helping each other grow and all this, but I really need you to tell me how long and how to deal with her and all of that. And one day it was like, it was like I pulled up and it was like everything in me was like, this is it. Let her know she's got to go. And I went to, I pulled up, my husband was in the car and I said, can I holler at you for a minute? And I got out the car. I said, come on, girl, let's take a walk for a minute. I said, you got two minutes? She said, yeah. I said, you know, I like you. I, you, you know, you have a very pleasing personality and you're good at doing hair. But I said, girl, my salon represents God more than anybody else. It represents God above represent me. I'm not perfect. But because it represents God, my standards have to be above cause uh, above the uh, state board. They have to be above professionalism. And I said, and every time I turn around, girl, you breaking the rule. She said, I know, I know. You want me to go, don't you? I said, I'm sorry, but yeah. <laughs> I said, you know, we stop by. We can have lunch together, you know, but I can't have you doing that. I, it puts everybody in jeopardy. And she said, I understand. And it was a very sweet thing. And I gave her a week and she was able to find another place. And then she packed up her stuff and she left. We hugged each other. I prayed for her. I think I prayed for her. And she went on about her business. And we've run into each other at time to time. We'd hug each other. Hey, girl, how you doing? You know, where are you working now? And I found out after the fact that she had a reputation of salon hopping because after she was there a minute, folks were showing her the door. She just would not follow the rules. So sometimes... You know, you have to do the hard thing, but you don't have to have a hard heart. You don't have to be angry about it. You don't have to have an attitude. They don't have to become your enemy and you don't have to become theirs. So God will show you how to handle people if you take the time to pray from second to second, from moment to moment, as it arises, as the as the opportunity reveals itself. There's your moment to pray and ask God, how do I handle this? Orchestrate my feelings, orchestrate my attitude so that I don't mishandle your people, whether they are your people or not. Because if they're not your people like this woman, if you handle it wrong, they may not ever want to know Jesus because of how you presented him and represented him. But if you represent God in love, one day down the road, that seed is going to germinate. And you never know if you might be one of the most influential ones in their decision to accept Jesus. So we have to be careful how we talk to people. We have to be careful how we relate to people. If we get impatient, Lord, is my spirit right? Or am I being arrogant right now? Am I thinking more highly of myself than I ought to? 
Lord, is this shortcoming getting on my nerves because my love tank is low? Then I ask you to fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit and pour your love out in my heart. Overflow me with your love because my love is not sufficient. My love is ugly. My love stinks. But your love is what I want to share with people. That's the, that's the love that's edifying. That's the life-giving love, the head-lifting love, the encouraging love. So that's all I really want to say is be careful how you treat people because when you find yourself getting impatient and you find yourself getting a little short and a little short, if you allow that, if you indulge that too much, who knows what could fly out of your mouth? And what comes out cannot be, <laughs> you can't pull it back. Once it comes out, once you say those words, once you say it in that tone, you look at them with that look. Mm. Hmm. You can correct people and save their dignity all at the same time. You can give a person a word of correction make an adjustment on how they do this or how they do that. And you can make them feel like they can conquer the world. You know, you can either say, now I don't know how many times I'm going to have to tell you this. Frankly, I'm getting tired of telling you. That's not an edifying way. It may be true. But you have to ask God to help you cope all your truth with love for them so you may have to say something like you know what you are so i've seen how you do some things and it amazes me and then i watch how you do other things i'm gonna take a baseball bat upside your head now you're saying it in a joking way put your arm around their shoulder and tell them come on over here i'm gonna show you how to get this right I don't want to have to beat you up. And you can say it in a way that spares their spares them from being embarrassed, spares them from being shamed. You have to ask God to teach you people management. Because and and I'm saying this because I'm seeing a lot of things with the way people interact with other people, the more people I'm getting involved with. I see the interactions and I start seeing, it starts feeling like romper room. Everybody's got their emotions. Everybody's got their personal values. Everybody's got their standards. We're not talking about the Lord's standards. We're just talking about, you know, those little personal things, you know, those, those areas, you know, idiosyncrasies. That's the best way to call it. And certain things may get on my last nerve, but it doesn't mean it's wrong. But the more love you have in your heart, the less that stuff will bother you. The more inner healing you receive from God one-on-one, -on -one, the less you'll be offended by what people say, do, or don't do. So you won't run around with romper room. She said this, and, and I don't like the way she looked at me. She, he didn't want to hold my hand. She didn't let me play with her toy. Wah, wah, wah. And that's the way I'm sure a lot of us sound to God. So let's ask God to help us grow, mature. Strengthen us on the inner man, Lord. Take this impatience, this intolerance out of me. Because that's not who you are. I want to have the mind of Christ, the heart of God, the love that's flowing from the Holy Spirit. I want to exemplify and exude God in every way, shape, and form, in thought, feeling, action, and word. Don't you?